Good morning! It is currently Saturday and I have decided to do a 24-hour readathon and reading vlog today with a little bit of a theme to it. So I'm going to be doing a 24-hour readathon with my patrons. I try and do these really often. If I can't do them monthly, I try and do them bi-monthly, but I do try and do them every month if I can. If you ever do want to participate, they are available to all tiers of my Patreon. I will leave a link down below. I love my Patreon community so much. We do weekly live shows, we have a book club, we have an active Discord, you get exclusive videos. There's so many different things. I absolutely love this community. But yeah, link down below. You can join at any tier to be able to do these readathons. But I was thinking, I love reading horror. And last year, I think I kind of unlocked horror as a new favorite genre for myself. But I tend to only read horror at specific times of the year when it's like spooky season, October, November time. And I was thinking, well, why? Why am I doing that? I love this genre. I want to read more of it. How am I going to read more of it if I only wait for two months of the year to actually read it? So this vlog is about reading horror in the summertime. I have a little bit of an ambitious TBR for this video and I'm going to go into this in more detail in a little bit but I'm going to go out for a run and then head into town to pick up a couple of bits shortly before I start my live show for the day for the readathon. So just a quick overview of my TBR. I have got three books on it. One of them is Teeny Weeny. So this is Sour Candy by Keelan Patrick Burke. This one I feel like I'm definitely gonna be the most achievable, she says, hopefully. Watch me regret that. No, that should be. Then I've got The Creeper by A.M. Shine, which is what I'm currently listening to as an audiobook that I started this morning, so I'm gonna listen to that on my run. And then I've got Grady Hendrix, How to Sell a Haunted House, which is the one I'm most excited about, because I've really enjoyed Grady Hendrix's writing recently, and this one I know is, has got a kind of a different angle and approach to Haunted House, so I'm excited to hear what that is. So that is my slightly ambitious TBR. I'm gonna head out for my run now, now and I will let you know a little bit more about these books as I start them. Okay, I have come back from my run. I've got ready, I've started sprints. It is now one o'clock and I am nearly finished with my first book of this readathon. I've been pretty productive today. I've decorated wrapping paper, wrapped up some presents, packed away the presents, and I've just generally got my flat in good working order. So it is time for thoughts on The Creeper. This book is following a historian and an archeologist who are hired by somebody to go to a remote Irish village and investigate some things that are happening around there centering around this folklore story of the creeper. They can't really find anything out until they're told by one little girl that the creeper, three times you see him, each night he comes closer. They then start to see the figure watching them and the stories are kind of starting to, to freak them out a little. So I am... Um, 
this far through this. I'm nearly finished with this. I've been listening to a lot of this this morning. I think I've got about an hour left in the audiobook. I'm enjoying the atmosphere and the idea of this folklore tale and the the conversation in general about why folklore scary stories are used I think is quite an interesting one but this is really frustrating me in a certain aspect because we're mainly following Ben who's the historian we've also got Chloe who's the archaeologist but we're mainly seeing all of this from Ben's perspective and he his kind of his feelings and thoughts towards Chloe have really bugged me he is definitely objectifying her quite a lot which is frustrating me and then she's given no indication that she needs protecting or that she's vulnerable in any way but he keeps making her this victim and making her need to be protected and he keeps like putting himself in her way to protect her and it's just annoying me he's not being gal and, and gracious with it he's just being obnoxious with it in my mind i think he probably thinks oh i'm being a really nice guy but it's actually really bugging me and i can't quite get over that because he keeps doing it and he keeps talking about how weak and vulnerable and how much of a victim he's actually said she's a victim how much of a victim she is and i just hate that that's the way that they're pinning her like she's clearly this incredibly smart woman with this knowledge that she's got enough to be hired for this job like she's clearly got that there why are we pinning her as a victim why are we making her seem like she's only there to further his story in the plot so that is actually really annoying me and is almost ruining the reading experience for me unfortunately so i've got about 100 pages under 100 pages left i think i'll probably finish it in the next sprints so i will let you know what i rate this overall i'm honestly torn because i'm enjoying the story element i just hate the way that he is viewing her and whenever i have these kind of questions about books with characters that are written in this way I always kind of get caught up in my own head about, okay, is it being done deliberately to make us feel a certain way about the character? Maybe. However, I, there's no other signs in this that we're meant to specifically like dislike this character. There's kind of things that have been specifically said about him, I think, to try and make us like him. So I don't, I honestly don't know if it's being done deliberately or not for this situation, but regardless, I am not loving seeing it because it doesn't seem to further the plot. I don't know if it will, I don't know how it could, but at the moment it's not furthering the plot, I don't need it to be there, and it's definitely causing a little bit of a spanner in the works for my reading experience, but I will let you know when I finish this. I feel like so far, good progress, nearly finished one whole book, thank you Audible for <laughs> helping me with that because it's meant I've been able to do loads of other stuff. Then I am going to read, is it Sour Candy? Is that what it's called? I think Sour Candy, and then I'm going to read How to Sell a Haunted House. Okay, I finished The Creeper and I've given it 3.5. I thought it might come out as a 3, but it, it did edge towards 3.5. What I said still stands, I didn't like that the main character made the character of Chloe into this victim. I felt she was unnecessarily stereotypically the damsel in distress role and she just didn't need to be and I don't think that added anything to the story but it took away for me so I didn't like that side of it. But also as the kind of crux of this story came together I felt like we were being given the information far too easily that was meant to be tense and full of suspense oh, that kind of rhymed but we were meant to kind of have this slow drawn out atmospheric feel it felt like that was what it was leading towards like the whole question of who is the creeper why is the creeper coming after people what is this story and why is it happening was then just so quickly revealed at different stages of the book that it felt like it was taking away the intrigue there were moments where there was a, a part that i was like okay this is going to be creepy this is going to build up the suspense but instead the characters immediately revealed something that completely removed that element of tension from that scene so as far as a horror goes i thought this would creep me out it's literally called the creeper i thought it would give me the fear i am on a constant search for the fear at the moment to find a book that is genuinely going to make me feel scared and I don't know whether it was because I was listening to this as an audiobook, so I didn't get the atmosphere in the same way. However, I thought the narrator did do a pretty good job of, of narrating it, so I felt like that wouldn't have been a big issue with it. Or if it just didn't build it up for me, but I just felt like this wasn't there with the fear, because any time there was an opportunity for me to feel scared, there was an immediate solution to the situation, so it completely took me away from the moment that could have made me feel like that. So generally, unfortunately, I feel a little disappointed with this one, but that's fine. We have book one of the readathon, book one of the day done. Now I'm going to read, move on to reading Sour Candy, which I'm hoping is a lot better. That one is under 100 pages, so I'm definitely going to be reading that pretty quickly. And then we're moving on to Grady Hendrix, which is what I'm so excited for, as I probably have said too many times. But that's what I'm really looking forward to. I was hoping that this one would be better. 
it wasn't awful, but it just wasn't quite hitting it for me personally. This is my current setup. <laughs> I was sat outside, but the chairs that I've got are really not very comfortable for long-term sitting. So I've moved my chair to my window and that, that's the setup for the day. My laptop is there. I have a book in reach, although that, that's the one I'm gonna be reading, but it's, I mean, it's not the best solution. It wasn't the easiest to move the chair there, but it works and it's comfortable. Okay, I have finished Sour Candy. This was an interesting reading experience. This is following a man who meets a boy in a grocery shop and this boy ends up becoming this man's son. This man does not have a son. He's never met this boy before, but suddenly this boy is like imprinted into this man's life and is his son. And everyone knows that this boy is this man's son. It's a very interesting concept, really unique, very strange. I rated it four stars. It was very quick. I've literally read this in one sprint. I just can't really wrap my head around it yet. I think I need to process it. It was so random. The thing with novellas is they don't give you as much time to get into characters and settings, so you lose out there, but I feel like they can just do anything, like they can make everything that's happening completely bizarre, and that is what this this is. I, I feel like I can't give a proper review because it was so short, there's little I can say without giving things away, but it was really strange, and I did like it. It didn't scare me, but it was definitely very odd and kind of creepy in a surreal what the hell is happening kind of horror style so i liked it and now i'm moving on to grady hendrix I am 130 pages into this book, 13 chapters, and I'm really liking it. I haven't told you what it's about yet, so I'm gonna start with that. This is following a sibling relationship. We mainly follow the sister in this relationship as she comes back to her hometown following the death of her parents to help her brother sell the house. The house, however, is haunted in a little bit of an unusual way. Her and her brother do not get on at all, so we have a massive friction in their relationship, and I deeply dislike the brother. Grady Hendrix has written him so well to be somebody that at the moment I dislike. I think there's gonna be a redemption arc for him. I, I don't know what it's gonna to take to make me like this guy, but I, I suppose that's the route that Grady Hendrix is gonna take with it. But at the moment, I just really, really, really don't like him. There's also a lot more sadness at the start of this book than I expected, which I should have expected because obviously we're following the loss of their parents and the grief that surrounds that and how people deal with grief in different ways. I genuinely didn't expect to be hit so hard by that right at the start of the book, but it hit me. The fear side of it for me isn't there yet, but you can tell the buildup is coming. I find what Grady Hendrix tends to do with their writing, especially in something like Horror Store as well, is there's this kind of comedic horror element where the two are blended together. So there's definitely scary, creepy moments, but it's also balanced with moments that are horrifying, but funny. And I think that this so far is showing flickers of that. So I'm intrigued to see how that pans out and if this one is, is gonna give me the fear, because I'm still searching for the fear. I'm still searching for it. But so far, I am really liking it. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to finish this one tonight or not. Part of me is like, don't rush it, take your time. Like, I'm already 130 pages in, so I've read a fairly decent amount today. But obviously, I have set myself a challenge for this vlog. I did wanna try and read all three of these books, and I am over halfway through that challenge. I have read, like, over 300 pages? Close to 400 pages? I don't know how many pages I've read. I've read quite a lot of pages today. So regardless, I've definitely read a lot and that was the point. And the point was to read horror in the summer, which I have been because I've been sat by the door all day with the sun coming in. So I feel like I've definitely accomplished a lot so far, but I would like to try and read as much as this as possible. I will let you know more thoughts once I have got a bit further into this book. All right, gang, I'm calling it. I'm calling it a night. I have not managed to finish How to Sell a Haunted House, but I have read, I think, 600 pages in total. Not of this one book, obviously. This is not 600 pages long, but I have read over half of this book. I think I've read over 600 pages in total for this readathon. I should probably work that out, shouldn't I? 
hang on, I shit you not, it is exactly 600, exactly 600 pages that I read today. So I'm gonna say it's been pretty successful. Yes, I would have liked to finish How to Sell a Haunted House, however, I will take getting over halfway. The creepy shit is emerging and it's, oh, it's very strange the way the horror is transpiring. There was suddenly this scene that just creeped up out of nowhere and just happened and I was just like, what the hell is happening? What is going on? but in a really good way. Like, it's so intriguing. I really want to talk about what the horror aspect of it is, but I don't want that to be a spoiler. So I'm not going to say more than the fact that there's this haunted house and it's just, it's good. It's gripping and I'm enjoying it a lot. Also, one of the things I'm enjoying about it is that it's got a slight tie into a book that I enjoyed as a kid. Wow, well, I say it's a book that I enjoyed. A book that I cried a lot at as a kid. But again, I can't tell you what that is because I feel like that might be inadvertent spoilers again. So basically I can't really say much because I don't want to accidentally ruin it but it's really good so far and I really love Grady Hendrix's writing style. Grady Hendrix is 100% an auto by author for me so all the wins. I'm gonna wrap this up now but thank you so much for watching. I have enjoyed reading some horror books in the summer. If you'd like to see more of this kind of content, more challengey themed challenge videos, let me know and as I said I do try and do these readathons really regularly for all tiers of my Patreon so for one pound you can join. I also do weekly live shows for my Hobbiton tiers if you would like to find anything about this. It is linked down below as well as all the other perks I do as well. Thank you so much for watching. I will catch you in the next one.